starts right now. The party with the purpose is back less than 24 hours away, and we are taking a look at the final preps for both people's safety and potential weather ahead of Fiesta 2023. Taking aim at a growing crisis, the vaccine that could save lives as researchers here in Texas continue to fight fentanyl. And a 97 year old grandmother fulfills her lifelong dream of getting a college degree. How long she's had to wait before finally walking across that stage. You hear the music and you know what's coming. The San Antonio Party with a Purpose. Fiesta 2023 kicks off in just a few hours. Yeah, there is a new location for Fiesta Fiesta. It is this year at Travis Park. That's, of course, at Pecan and Jefferson downtown. The night team's Patty Santos was there for the setup. And Patty, we have to talk about police because they have a warning for people. Yeah, law enforcement want people to plan before they fiesta. Of course, fiesta is a lot of fun, but before that fun begins, there's a lot of work that goes into getting everything ready. Take a look. This was a scene around 7 o'clock today at Travis Park. That is where the road closures started. The Fiesta, Fiesta kickoff is from 4 to 10 p.m. tomorrow. But vendors and setup crews started putting up the tents, tables, porta potties, and all the equipment. It's going to be a long night for the staging crews. It takes a lot of hands moving quickly to make the Fiesta magic happen. Now, if you're heading to Travis Park for the event tomorrow, study the parking maps in that area or even consider taking a lift. So there's a little bit of different traffic patterns on getting downtown. We did a social media post on our Facebook and Instagram the other day. The city has some recommended parking garages to park in. It has some street closure information on their website and information. We really hope that we don't have any injuries or fatalities because you know we care about our community. And that's really why we're here to, to help spread that message. We need the community who's viewing this to take responsibility and, and take action. Out at Alamo Stadium, it was a sea of red and blue local law enforcement reminding people who will take part in the Fiesta events to plan ahead and drink responsibly. More than two and a half million people are expected to, to attend the 10 day event. Now, the message for this year is Fiesta safe drive sober. About 20 local law enforcement agencies, community prevention groups stood side by side for one of the largest DWI roll calls. It is the first since before the pandemic in 2019. Now, uh, since January, Bear County law enforcement have made more than 1700 DWI arrests up to today. Now, we'll send it back to you. And Patty, of course, we're worried about the weather as we go into tomorrow. Fiesta, Fiesta, outdoors, downtown, Travis Park kicking off Fiesta officially. And I even just boosted the storm chances a little bit more from the latest data that we just got in this evening. Now, you, in the morning, we'll have some of that fog, patchy drizzle. And then into the afternoon, a few isolated showers or storms popping up. But into the evening hours, we're talking 7 p.m. through 11 p.m., we're looking at that 50% chance, and that doesn't mean it's a coin flip 50-50. That means about 50% of our area should get hit by a thunderstorm at some point in that time frame. And we are under the threat of a few severe storms to pop up. Out of a scale of 1 to 5, we're about a 1 in 5. You get just north of us a 2 out of 5 for that threat tomorrow. We'll talk about the primary risks, look at the future cast, and a huge temperature swing and more rain chances to talk about coming up. Adam, thank you. This next story proves why it's so important to be persistent. A St. Mary's business owner is getting a COVID construction grant from the city after it originally denied that money to her. So we want, we, we want you to meet Tammy Russell. She owns Candlelight Poorhouse on the St. Mary's Strip. She applied for the grant program to keep her restaurant open, but the city then denied her application, saying that it didn't meet certain requirements. But here's the thing, though. It didn't give any specifics. What else can, could have kept me from getting qualified? I lost money. I have my business that was affected by it. My staffing, the roads to get access. So what else am I missing here? Well, they got to that, right? Lyft Fund, the company administering the grant funding, sent KSAT a statement. It reached out to Russell to, quote, shed light on the details of her application so that it reassessed Russell's application. And guess what? They approved it. 
San Antonio police asking for you to be on the lookout for a Dodge Ram truck that may be connected to a hit and run. This is what it may look like. The driver said to have hit another driver with the truck last Friday, April 14th, happened along I-37 between Loop 410 and Military Drive. The truck towing a trailer hit the victim's vehicle from behind, causing that person to lose control and spin. The suspect didn't stop to help and could face a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. That Ram truck is believed to be a 2010 to 2012 model. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your night beat news flash. After more than 13 hours, the families of the Robb Elementary mass shooting victims were able to testify in favor of a gun reform bill at the state capitol. It happened late last night. Texas House Bill 2744 would increase the age to purchase a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. There are exceptions for peace officers, people in the military, those honorably discharged. The Uvalde families say this law could have saved their kids' lives. So I don't come to you as a Democrat or Republican. I just come to you as a mom, as a parent. Enough is enough. Please do something. Do something now. Don't wait until another community has to go through this. So will legislators do something? Well, right now that bill is sitting in committee hearings. The Community Safety Committee will decide if the bill can move to the House floor for a vote. We have background information on several other gun legislation bills on our website right now, ksat.com. And while many are waiting for that House bill to move forward, a Texas Senate bill to strengthen school safety passed today. Texas Senate Bill 11 updates active shooter plans for schools, along with following the, excuse me, along with allowing the Texas Education Agency to create a safety and security department. The agency will audit schools and possibly put them under state control if their active shooter plans are deemed inadequate. The bill also strengthens truancy laws for students who are constantly absent. The bill now heads to the House where it will need to be voted out of committee before hitting the full floor. It's been 30 years since a small Texas community outside of Waco became the center of a standoff that ended in tragedy. A 51 day long standoff between the religious sect, the Branch Davidians and federal authorities came to a fiery end back on April 19th, 1993. Four federal agents, 82 Branch Davidian members, including 24 children, died in the violent confrontation and ensuing fire. Eight members found guilty of voluntary manslaughter and weapons charges, while 11 others acquitted of conspiring to kill federal agents. The Supreme Court extending its stay on a lower court ruling to have more time to decide if an abortion pill should remain available. It means no new restrictions will be put in place on Mifepristone. The justices decision deadline was originally today. Now the justices scheduled to meet for a private conference on Friday. Now if the court upholds the Fifth Circuit decision, it would roll back about seven years of expanded access. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Tonight, promising news in the fight against fentanyl. By now, you know how deadly fentanyl is. It's killing tens of thousands of Americans each year. But researchers in Houston are developing a powerful weapon against a synthetic opioid. It's a vaccine that actually stops fentanyl from killing people. And here's how it works. If a person is vaccinated, the, the drug does not enter the brain. It stays in the systemic circulation and then is eventually eliminated from the body. And so this is the membrane. And that's exactly how the fentanyl vaccine would keep people alive. The reason fentanyl is so dangerous is because it's potent and acts quickly. Once it's in your body, it can immediately stop you from breathing, which then keeps oxygen from entering your brain. Now back to the vaccine. So. We confirm that the vaccine has been made properly. Researchers at this lab at the University of Houston are developing the vaccine. Yeah. Colin Hale is the lead research associate professor in charge of the project, which began six years ago. That's when the opioid epidemic was starting to be really take hold. In that time, researchers have successfully tested the vaccine on mice. And next, Researchers behind this vaccine are hoping to start human clinical trials within a year and then eventually have this vaccine on the market within five. Hale tells KSAT the vaccine would protect two categories of people, those who are inadvertently exposed to fentanyl and those who are addicted to fentanyl but want to quit. So if they relapse, those antibodies will bind to fentanyl and prevent it from getting into the brain. 
They will feel no euphoric effects. They will not overdose. And this will give them a chance to get back on the wagon to sobriety. Basically, they'd get another chance to stay sober and away from a drug that's now the leading cause of death for 18 to 45 year old Americans. Hill says the vaccine would also be a major relief for parents. And they can feel reassured that they that their children will not get poisoned by fentanyl or fentanyl derivatives. So here's more good news when it comes to this. Colin Hale says the vaccine so far is not showing any side effects. Coming up, the road to a college degree, yes, can be long, and nobody knows that more than that 97-year-old. We have her story of getting a second chance at an education. A home improvement sometimes necessary, sometimes very expensive. A program is hoping to help offer free home improvements. See who qualifies and how the promises that all this will help our city. A man is in jail after two teen teenagers were shot at an HEB parking lot near Austin. Police say that it started after one of the cheerleaders mistook the suspect's car for theirs. Heather Roth says that she and Peyton Washington were carpooling from a cheer gym in Houston. The suspect, 25-year-old Pedro Rodriguez, was sitting in the passenger seat. Roth says that she apologized, but Rodriguez got out of the car and opened fire. He's now charged with deadly conduct. Washington was shot twice. She's now off a ventilator and she's going to get surgery. The other teen was grazed by a bullet. How would you like someone coming to your home to make improvements all for free? Well, the catch is your home has to have been built before 1960. It's a program by Rehab Arama with the help of the city of San Antonio. Homeowners can receive up to $25,000 towards improvements. The goal of the program is to preserve historic and aging homes. This is a list of improvements available along with how to apply for the program, which you can find all that on KSAT.com. And good luck. Yeah. So today she's a great grandmother, but in a few weeks, 97 year old Hazel Feldman is going to have a new title, and that is one of a college graduate. Yeah, she sat down with the night team's John Paul Barajas about achieving a loft, lifelong dream and the importance of never giving up. I think it's the epitome. I think it's about the greatest thing you can get. Don't start because I'll cry. <laughs> Tears of joy for a dream that's taken decades to become a reality. For 97-year-old Hazel Feldman, the road to her honorary associate of arts degree started in New Jersey. I graduated high school in 1943. That's a couple of years ago. She eventually started college classes in the 1980s, but everything was put on hold when she moved to San Antonio for family and work. After a 15-year break, she enrolled at Northeast Lakeview College. She was doing one course at a time. I mean, at 97, I mean, at that time I was 94, 95. It's uh, a little bit hard to take more than one course at a time. Understandably so. A lot has changed since she was in college last. It was a little difficult getting online and doing the course online. With the help of her family, friends, and professors. Are you older than your professors? Much older. I'm probably their grandmother. <laughs> She started earning college credits, but as time went on, Feldman worried she might not finish her degree, so she asked if life experiences would count. Take me back to that day when they told you that they were going to give you the honorary degree. Oh. What was going through your head in that moment? Oh, the handkerchiefs weren't enough. <laughs> Feldman is set to walk the stage on May 10th. By then I'll be 97 and a half. And has this message to the world. If they have a dream, follow it. Go work for it. Take a long time, but they can get it. Jump Paul Barajas, KSET, 12 News. Congratulations, Hazel. Her message will also be shared with future Northeast Lakeview students. She actually wrote a letter about her experience and her message. It was put in a school time capsule that will be opened in 25 years. Go, Miss Hazel. I love that story. Perseverance right there. Yes. All right, 73 degrees out there. Adam, I am obviously concerned. We're supposed to have a broadcast from Fiesta Fiesta tomorrow night. I'm hoping it's maybe just a few drizzles here and there. 
Yeah, well, you know, I hope so as well, yeah. right? I hope it's that way as well. It's just there's the potential for something more to hit downtown during that time. But remember, we could have the storms pop up and they could be just around downtown and Fiesta Fiesta could go off without a hitch. So let's talk about it. Updated modified forecast. It's a fluid situation, kind of a tricky forecast. So we'll be updating it continually and frequently. You got to check back for updates. And especially in the case that weather authority app where you get in the quickest dry Friday and Saturday, a temperature roller coaster on the way. So a lot to talk about here. Let's start with those rain and storm chances. I boosted them to 50% tomorrow. Again, that doesn't mean it's a coin flip 50 50. It means about half of our area should be affected during tomorrow evening on into tomorrow night. Friday and Saturday looking dry Sunday. We've got those rain and storm chances up to 60%. The big question about Sunday is the timing that's still very uncertain whether it's going to be earlier in the day or a little bit later in the day. That's something we'll definitely be updating and next week as of now 20% chances every afternoon Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday for those typical afternoon pop ups today. Severe weather, especially breaking out around Oklahoma City. Big hail up there. We know how that what that's like. Unfortunately, they got some big hail in that area and down here. We were looking for some storms off to the west. None of them really materialized and actually made it to the Rio Grande and across the border. Uh, one little shower did in Valverde County, but that's about it. Otherwise, we were dry with just a few little spritzes and sprinkles going forward tomorrow. We'll start the day with those low clouds and more fog, some mist, you know, a trace of rain here and there, maybe a hundredth of an inch for the morning commute by noon. Maybe a stray sprinkle. That's about it. Mostly cloudy. Then we get into the afternoon. We generate that instability in the atmosphere and we should start to develop a few pop up thunderstorms later in the afternoon around the morning or around the evening commute and especially thereafter cold front drops in tomorrow evening around and after sunset and that should help to kickstart some of those showers and storms and I know you see at eight o'clock a storm right over San Antonio. It's unlikely it's going to be in this exact place that the future cast draws it. Just pay attention to the mere fact that the future cast is showing more numerous showers and storms developing tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. Severe weather threat, about a one out of five here in San Antonio. You get into Comal County, it's about a two out of five. So bottom line, there's the potential for some severe weather tomorrow. Any storm that develops could develop into a severe thunderstorm with large hail and even straight line gusty winds being the primary threats. But we think hail's our main threat. Now keep in mind, downtown, if there's even just lightning in the vicinity of Fiesta Fiesta, that right there is your primary threat and lightning's not considered severe. Anyway, 73 degrees now. Dew point is 67. We start tomorrow at 68 by the afternoon. We're up to 84 for the high temperature with those increasing storm chances later on in the day. And for the most part, we'll be in the mid 80s all across the board tomorrow. Friday, we're up to 88 Saturday, 82. Then check this out Sunday down to 67 for the high temperature Monday, only 70 degrees for the high. That, of course, being the river parade, a little different than what we're used to for river parade weather, but we do have to watch out for the chance of a few afternoon pop up showers and storms then as well. I'll bring my rain gear. You know, I figure metals don't run. <laughs> Neither will I. Unless there's lightning. Unless there's lightning. Unless there's lightning. Then, then I'll hook you out of there. Then, then Adam will call me back. Well, look, we've got 10 days to enjoy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Andrew. Hey, how's it going? Good. So it's really go time for UTSA baseball. That's right. And they had a little bit of hiccup last night against Texas State, but that was a tough game. Both teams very good this season. UTSA off to one of the best starts in program history. And this year, they want to make sure they leave no doubt in the committee's minds as they start building toward the playoffs. When we come back, we'll hear from the Roadrunners. Plus, an Antonian shooter made her decision on where she's going to college next. It was not a decision I made going into the inning uh, when when, they, when he did call the ball low on Matt. He hadn't called the low pitch all night for either team. I kind of said, you know what, maybe maybe a little spark here might help. Oh, that fired up the dugout for sure and the fans. I, I really thought like, after that I, we were fired up. I thought we were going to pull away. Head coach Pat Hallmark got after the umpires for a wide strike zone, and his team loved the fight in big board sports. 
Number 25 UTSA came up short last night in their I-35 showdown against Texas State at home 5-3, but that's a speed bump on what has been a fantastic season so far. The Roadrunners are 28-9 overall heading into the final month of the regular season, and they're ranked in three national polls, coming in at number 25 in the D1 baseball poll. UTSA will kick off the final stretch of the season with a three-game road series against Florida International starting this Friday. They know that every game counts, especially after getting snubbed by the selection committee last year. We remember that feeling, so I mean every every game, whether it's you know a Tuesday, maybe a Wednesday, or if we're going for a sweep or whatever, every game matters, and we know that now. Like compared to last year, we had a few games that if we could have just won one more, maybe two, we were in the tournament. All we can do is is play the games that are in front of us, and so that's what we try and focus on most, more than reading too far into the numbers or anything like that. You know, there's plenty of other people that that do that all day long, and so we as players just focus on the game in front of us and doing the best we can. Head coach Pat Hallmark was tossed in the bottom of the seventh last night for arguing with the home plate umpire over his strike zone. Hallmark went off on the ump for 20 seconds before getting ejected, then went another 20 seconds before leaving the field with his players applauding the fight. This is Hallmark's second ejection this season, and he knows how to toe the line. I tried to be real careful not to do it uh, prolonged, that's what they call it, where I would get suspended the next game, and, and from what I understand, I'm not, so happy about that. In the other dugout, Texas State seems to be surging at the right time of year. The Bobcats have now won five straight games, including victories over Texas and UTSA, both of which are ranked opponents, and a sweep of Marshall over the weekend. Texas State is now 25-13 and 13 overall, and as they prepare for another road series against a strong Troy team, the Bobcats feel like they're gaining some real confidence. It's going to be tough. It's not, it's not easy to win on the road. And so uh, you got to find ways to, to make pitches, have quality at bats, and play really good defense, and not let the moment get too big. And so these moments are helping us uh, for down the stretch. And so if you continue to, to handle them, you build confidence of, of handling these environments and, and uh, really good quality teams. The first game of the three-game series between the Bobcats and Trojans is set for Friday at 6 p.m. Let's head to the majors. Rangers wrapped up a road series in Kansas City this afternoon, and they jumped all over the Royals early in this one. Top of the second, Marcus Simeon pokes a single into right field. That'll drive in a run. Simeon continues his torrid start to the season. Three hits, two runs, and two RBI today. Jonah Heim also went two for four with a homer. The Rangers racked up 13 hits, and they cruised to a 12-3 victory in Plubring to 12-6 on the season. Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys are preparing for the 2023 season with plenty of changes on the offensive side of the ball. Offensive coordinator Kellen Moore has left for the Chargers and longtime running back Ezekiel Elliott was released in March. On a podcast with Adam Schefter yesterday, Dak was asked about those changes, specifically Zeke's departure. Still doesn't feel right uh, going in the facility, starting off season program. Um, been, been my locker buddy for years and just a guy that I'll go to war with and uh, do anything for in this world. And uh, it's tough not not going to work with him now, but um, he's somebody I support. He won't he won't be a free agent for long, and I don't understand why he still is. But um, yeah, it's been tough. But 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 with change, change is good as well. So I've got to embrace that, embrace what we've got moving forward, and I'm excited for it. So are we. One of the Antonians' best shooters is heading to the University of Dallas next. Antonian senior guard Madison Olguin is heading to the University of Dallas. She was top 10 in all of TAPS for three-pointers made and charges taken this last season. KSAT 12 Sports Director Larry Ramirez caught up with Madison today to talk with her about the decision. There are a couple players on the Dallas roster who are originally from the San Antonio area. Did that impact her decision at all? Two of the girls I actually knew from playing um, club basketball, and they were older and on the older team, so I was able to know already who they were. Cool. So when visiting the team, they were kind of giving me <laughs> props on what to do, yeah. so it felt great to have older kids there kind of being able to teach me. Changing to college, obviously a very tough transition. Having a community like this to help support her in that transition should be very exciting for her. Yeah, and she's far enough away, but not too far. Exactly. Yeah. It's only going to help her. I can't wait to see what she does when she goes to, to uh, Dallas. All right, we'll be right back after Thanks, this. Andrew. Yeah. So tomorrow, increasing storm chances by the late afternoon, evening, and into the nighttime hours. We're looking at some scattered activity to develop. We'll keep an eye on a Fiesta Fiesta and keep you all notified on the KSET Weather Authority app and on air. Otherwise, Friday, Saturday, looking dry. Big temperature drop as we go into Sunday, Monday with uh, rain likely on Sunday.
a little bit of everything for the next 10 days. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'll see you live from Travis Park tomorrow at 5, 6, and at 8. Good night.